What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. And now that we've been beaten over the head with the iPad, the hottest news is all about Apple's iPhone OS 4.0. So we sent our well-respected correspondent to the scene with this report. Brian Tong here outside of Apple headquarters at the conclusion of their iPhone OS 4.0 announcements. And the big news, multitasking is here. Let's start off with the first one which is uh, probably going to be the biggest one, and that is multitasking. Now we know multitasking exists on other phones, but really the way Apple showcased it and its execution is what stood out. You could use applications like Pandora, listen to your music, interact with other apps, and another example was using Skype where you could take a phone call and then jump into other applications, still be on the same phone call, and look for all the information that you need. We also saw folders. We know plenty of you have so many apps, you just don't know how to organize them. They showed a cool little way to drag and drop them on top of each other. It creates a folder, and then you could see the icons of the apps in that folder. And one feature that took us by surprise is Apple is implementing what they call Game Center. Now, this is essentially a social network for gaming, much like Xbox Live, but now on the iPhone platform. You can invite friends, you can earn achievements, check out leaderboards. This is a space that Apple's never ventured into, and it was really a surprise. And then the rumored iAds platform, Apple is getting into the mobile advertising business. We think most of this mobile advertising really sucks. Um, and we thought we might be able to make some contributions. But what made this different is how you could actually play with ads within the app. You don't have to go outside of it. And these ads themselves kind of look like applications on their own. Apple is sharing 60% of the revenues with the developers, but Apple is getting into the mobile advertising business. To infinity and beyond. Some of the features they showcase an enhanced mail application. It has a unified inbox so you can have multiple accounts, multiple exchange accounts. And a cool thing that I liked, organizing your emails by threads. iBooks, we've seen it on the iPad. It's coming to the iPhone. And surprise, Apple's actually giving you something free. We're going to supply a free book. <laughs> and uh, we think uh, Winnie the Pooh is a good choice. There's also some new enterprise features, so businesses will really enjoy that. But the big news is multitasking is here. It's only going to be supporting currently the iPhone 3GS and third gen iPod Touch. For those of you who have an iPhone 3G or second gen touch, you'll have some of the iPhone OS features, but not multitasking. If the user has to use a task manager to manage which applications are running in the background and which aren't, they blew it. Joining me now, senior editor Kent German of CNET.com. Uh, Kent, what was the feature that really stood out the most to you? Well, of course, multitasking. One thing we've always asked for in the iPhone is something called a you know, task manager, but Steve Jobs said today, well, if they're doing a task manager, they're doing it wrong. And Apple does seem to have a nice way to do it. You just be able to call up, see all the apps that are running, and be able to select what you want. Seems pretty cool. Now, some people are going to be left in the dark because the iPhone 3G and second gen iPod Touch doesn't support it. Um, should they upgrade? Well, they don't have to answer that question yet because WWDC, Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, will be in June. We don't know exactly when. We should see new hardware there. So I would wait until that point because the OS isn't going to be available until after then. So then you can make the choice then, well, I'm just going to buy the iPhone 3GS or I'm going to get this new hardware, whatever it might be. All right, thanks, Kent. Now, the iPhone OS 4.0, it's going to be available sometime in summer of this year. Also for the iPad, they said sometime in fall. So we'll wait to see all that. For CNET.com, I'm Brian Tong. Thank you, Brian, and it's about time, Apple, that we get that multitasking. And all you Apple biters, we'd love to hear your thoughts on all the announcements. Now, many new iPad owners are still giddy about their new toy, but reality has hit, and if you're experiencing Wi-Fi issues, you are not alone. The Apple forums are on fire with issues ranging from not being able to connect to Wi-Fi after the iPad is sleeping, having other devices detect Wi-Fi, except for the iPad in the same spot, and even getting a weaker signal when it's laying down flat. Now, Apple has acknowledged there are issues and offers suggestions to help. So if you're experiencing a weak signal, one of their less technical solutions is move closer to the Wi-Fi router or hotspot. That alone gets a bad Apple. <laughs> Everyone keeps on asking me about new MacBook Pros, and I just keep saying, wait it out a couple more months. The Taiwanese newspaper Apple Daily says new MacBooks, MacBook Pros, and MacBook Airs are coming this month. Now, I translated the entire article for you with the help of Google, but just be patient, Apple buyers, because buying one right now would just be stupid. People are also asking us about when a Verizon iPhone is coming. All the rumors say late 2010, 
And do we know the official date? We don't, but Verizon CEO Ivan Seidenberg recently said the company told Apple that it wants to carry the iPhone. Of course, he declined to say when or even if it will be available for Verizon wireless customers, but the first public acknowledgement like this keeps stirring the pot. Now let's hit up some iPad stories. Comic book legend Jim Lee, who was at the Apple store in San Francisco, went to his Twitter page to showcase what the iPad is capable of using the Sketchbook Pro app. Now check out some of these killer renditions of Catwoman, and you can see how he built layer on top of layer for the Joker. Lee did say it was fun because he was digging the primitive feel of using your hands, but it was frustrating because he could have done this in half the time by hand, and the app crashed on him a few times without saving his work. So really, the possibilities on the iPad are endless, and uh, I don't know, Jim Lee, he does some really cool art, and uh, he's inspired me to do some of my own. And so I have this picture here. It's um, from one of my first dates recently, and you can see I used a uh, depth of color, a lot of like the pinks and reds to bring out the background. So um, yeah, I think I did a good job. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, are you guys looking to custom install an iPad into your car? These guys from Soundman Car Audio have done it. They hooked up an iPad to a Macintosh amp, you see what they did there, and really if it was up to me, I wouldn't put it in a Toyota Tacoma, but the process and setup is pretty slick and worth a watch. But maybe you don't have a car, and you don't have an iPad, and you want both. If that's the case, then get a Hyundai. Hyundai is giving away a free iPad with every purchase of its recently unveiled luxury sedan, the Equus, and the best part, it will come loaded with a Hyundai iPad app that allows you to make service appointments and its interactive manual will replace the hefty 300 page printed version so you're also being green. Good for you, Hyundai. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Make sure to send your emails to the Applebyte at CNET.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the latest iPhone OS. I'm Brian Tong, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the Apple.